Hey everyone, welcome into TechSags Rewind presented by our friends at Yeti. Fun show here from uh, the Metroplex. Thanks to our friends at the Charge Apparel. Had a lot of stuff to get into. We didn't really talk about Olin's hair, but we did get into some football on the program, like the key matchups. OB bringing it during the go hour. Billy Lucci reacted to Terry Bussey picking Texas A&M. He is the uh, most recent commit. Marty Smith joined us on the program. We talked about the A&M Arkansas game. We talked about his new book, Sideline CEO, and of course, a bunch of other topics there in the SEC. We had Jamie Morrison on the program. He usually joins us on Tuesday. He did, but then we had to react to the big win over the, the week against Florida, number four Florida at the time, by the way, and Missouri coming to town. All that and more here on the Texas Rewind. Give them to me, buddy. Well, let's talk about this. How about AM's wide receivers against the Arkansas secondary? We talked about how advantage AM. I, I, I would think a big advantage AM. Uh Arkansas again last year was ranked last in the entire nation in, in past defense. This year, I think there's something like 10th or 11th in the SEC. And uh, you know, the AM re- receiving court is so good as we saw last week. The uh, the 37-yard touchdown pass to Evan Stewart. Uh, you always look for Anaya Smith to make a big play. In fact, last year he picked up like a, I think it was second and 20-something. Yep. He picked it up against Arkansas. Um, and, and Noah Thomas is going to be back. We're still waiting for Moose to be turned loose. So uh, I think that there's an advantage in that matchup and hopefully a and can capitalize on it. But to do that, it may require blocking that a and pass protection against the Arkansas pass rush. Arkansas actually has a really good pass rush. I think they have 14 sacks of one of the best pass rushes in the uh, sec. So you got to give him protection. Hey, this, this week, max protection and all, in all ways that could be uh Defined. I don't have the numbers in front of me, so I shouldn't even ask. But like A and M is right behind uh, Arkansas because I think Arkansas has fourteen, A and M has thirteen sacks on the year. I'm curious though because A and M's the bulk of them came just last right. week. I'm wondering if if Arkansas has done it throughout each game. I or believe Arkansas has been more consistent with yeah. it. I believe uh, so. That's obviously a big um, a big matchup because if you're going to take advantage of that matchup with your receivers and secondary, you got to give Max some you know adequate time to find those receivers max protect max max protect max we could make shirts with these slogans I just think. max protect that max protects back max protect max yeah yeah no yeah okay max uh, protect max any other well, well, matchups uh, that you want to uh focus on yeah uh of course um, a lot of them are the, are the same. They just switch. How about that A&M secondary, which has been leaky at times against the Arkansas receivers? They've only been tested one game, right? Yes. They've only truly been tested one game, and it was a bad game. But wait, so was that a bad game? Or was it just, just a bad game or a bad omen? OB, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay here. It's going to go back to something you said in the first segment. I know that the secondaries had their issues. I know that. Like that we've seen it. Like the, the coverage has not been great. Mm-hmm. But there's a simple fix to half of their problems. Tackling. Just tackle. Okay. Like, look, you're gonna give up bombs every once in a while, but you cannot give up 14 yard slants that become bombs. There's a momentum thing, and there's a day-to-day program momentum, and it is so fleeting on the field but it also can come in a hurry like so when you're looking at it right now and you go man they, they lost connor wigman that was devastating news then they go get a guy like terry bussey right um <clears throat> momentum starts to change you go in on to win tomorrow against arkansas and you've had a week where you you've gotten a five-star commitment your 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 backup qb Looks like you know, legit QB. We know he is, but I mean QB one that outduels a KJ Jefferson, and you're setting up a showdown where the Aggies are two and zero in the SEC with Alabama coming here to Kyle Field, and God knows how many, how many recruits. So if you can do that, if you can do that, you have you, know, you you've really just like that. You know when things looked bleak a couple of days ago, you've turned program momentum around, and not a lot, not a lot of commitments. Can turn can turn program momentum around, but Terry Bussey and that kind of guy is, is certainly one. Griffin's going crazy. Of course, he's going to do that right when we go on radio. 
But yeah, Terry Bussey is the kind of guy that will turn your program momentum around in a hurry. And you look at the last couple commitments, and I'm sitting there looking at what they've done on these last few, David. And my gosh, you know, with, with Dominic McKinley, Terry Bussey, uh, they've got four or five stars now, number three class in the country. Uh, momentum on the recruiting front is absolutely skyrocketing. And, and I've gone through and really looked at these classes. You know, a ms getting up there in numbers. Everyone around them is up there in numbers. There's only a couple of classes that you could see making a big surge and moving up <clears throat> and moving past the Aggie. So, I mean, you fill out this class with a small handful of more guys. Let's just call them average, you know, like four-star guys. This is, as is, this is going to be a top five class. <clears throat> just There's just too much power at the top. There's very little weakness at the bottom. Uh, if they can hold this thing together – it's two out of three years with a top five class. I'm I'm sort of a leadership nerd. First of all, I love that. I love that entire sort of uh, cornucopia of traits that make great leaders. Um, there are people in my life who believed in me when I didn't believe in myself or realize that I had an ability, and they are a main uh, a major reason why I've been able to. I build the life I've, I've been able to build and been blessed to build. And so I also have the great opportunity to be around some of the greatest leaders of all time. And so I, they were kind enough to give me their time. Nick Saban, Dabo Sweeney, Mac Brown, Roy Williams, Tom Izzo, Urban Meyer, Kirby Smart, on and on. Doc Rivers, it's a who's who in this book. And I wrote it with those eight pillars and wrote it in an oral history type of format where you almost feel like they're all sitting around in a room sharing different storytelling and, and, and perspectives on what it's like to walk through that. And it's such a transformational time, especially in collegiate athletics, that, and you know, Jimbo's in it as well. And so, you know, you, 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 you really, it's an easy read. It's a very digestible read, but with tremendous insight, wisdom, perspective that, my hope is that all of you who buy it uh, will be able to inject some of that into your daily walk. I certainly have. Marty, last thing for you. Just uh, tell me a little bit about your combos with Jimbo. What what did you learn from his approach and his style? A lot. Um, I've always thought he was a tremendous leader. I think it says so much about him. The last chapter of the book or pillar in the book is evolution. And Jimbo has evolved since he's been at Texas A&M. And, and, and specifically, in the past couple of years, you know, he was very hard-headed about giving up the play calling because it's been, he's been so successful. And I love what Greg Sankey, the SEC commissioner, told me in the book about delegation. If, if you delegate to people and it's not getting done kind of the way you want it to, there's an inclination, I'll just do it myself. If you've been successful, as Jimbo has in the past, of, of being great at designing plays and, and setting his players up to succeed, there's an inclination of, why would I change? Jimbo and I grew up in the same place, man. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But that wasn't working. So he was willing this season to evolve as a CEO of that program, bring in Petrino, and he's starting to see the fruits of that labor. Uh, Aggie vol volleyball head coach Jamie Morrison told us they're going to knock off a top 25 team. It's just a matter of time. Well, I don't know if he was expecting it the next day or not, but he loved the way they were playing, and he joins us now here on Tex Ags Radio. Jamie, congrats, man. Uh, what a great win, and just cool for the for the program, the vibe, and also for the timing of, of your comments on our show. Yeah. Yeah. And like, like I said, just, I could sense it coming just the, the way that we were starting to deal with adversity. And uh, I don't know if you saw the reports and everything, but our bus broke down on the way there too. And uh, just the way that we handled that, I think my staff won, it was just immediately like, Hey, well, here's the plan in three minutes, we're all going to get off the bus. We all had Ubers called. Uh, and then uh, a city bus pulled up right behind our bus. And we we're like, you know what? Let's ask. And he was like, yeah, I'll take you to the game. So we all hopped on a city bus, went, and just the way that we dealt with kind of a really difficult situation that other people might be freaking out about. Uh, we're playing the number four team in the country. Our bus broke down. Oh my goodness. It was like, hey, we're just going to problem solve this. We're going to get to the mat arena. Uh, and just it was that moment right there. I was like, all right, we're ready to go do something. 
Um, so I, I called it just from a, I think our team's in a really, really good spot mentally right now and not where we can be. Um, I think the really cool thing is we're not even near our ceiling, but, uh, was fired up that we got the W. Well, let's talk about that problem solving because it wasn't a great start of the match, but then, uh, you finished the way you want to finish and there were some tense moments, but you all played your best game there at the end when it mattered. Yeah, and I think the thing I was most proud of, obviously, uh, you get a big win, you get a bunch of text messages, but um, it wasn't just people saying congratulations. It was just pointing out that like your team was playing more free than their team. Uh, and it's just really cool. Uh, and I think for anybody that's in charge of any organization, for people on the outside, from the outside world to see the things that you're trying to create uh, and to put them into words, it's one of the more rewarding things in the world. So uh, I wasn't just happy with the win. I was happy with the way we won. Um, but again, like we we're at 50% of our capacity. This group has so much potential to be great. And we're going to continue working on that. Well, thank you folks for watching. Make sure you get us to over 11,000 subscribers. If you watch this video often or these videos often, just subscribe to it to make our life a little bit easier. Like, comment, subscribe. We will see you Monday after the showdown between Arkansas and Texas A&M.